In order to use complex numbers in Python, you need an understanding of the complex plane. And that's what this video is about. Let's consider the real number line that we looked at in the previous video. And you can see I've drawn it here on this slide, but I've only shown it going from minus 5 to plus 5. And of course, the real number line is much bigger than this. Let us consider this, the square root of 4. Now, we know the square root of 4 will be equal to 2. And if I consider the real number line, I can ask the question, where is 2 on the real number line? So I can mark that off with an x, as you can see here. Let's consider another example. Let's look at the square root of minus 4. Now, a previous video has shown that we can split this minus 4 up inside the square root symbol as shown here as 4 times minus 1. We can further split this up as we can see here the square root of 4 times the square root of minus 1. Now we know the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of minus 1 well we can replace that with j so we can go on to show that this is is equal to 2j. Let's now consider the 2j and ask the question, where is it on the real number line? Now, on this slide, I've shown part of the real number line here. And of course, it can go much further in both the positive and the negative direction. But the question I wish to ask, is there anywhere along the real number line that I can place the 2j? And the answer is clearly no, 2j does not have a position on the real number line, which is not surprising because 2j is not a real number, it is an imaginary number. We have two units of the imaginary number j, where j represents the square root of minus 1. Now in Python, we've looked at this computer program before, and you can see I'm importing the math. And here I'm printing the square root of minus 4 as the square root function is defined in the math module. And when this computer program executes, what we will see is this. We will get a value error, a math domain error. Now this is telling us that the code in the math module is unable to deal with square roots of negative numbers. It is saying, for this module I have no idea how to find the square root of a negative number. Now, we have seen in a previous video that it is possible to take the square root of a negative number if we import a different module, if we import the CMath module. So if you look here, you can see that this line imports CMath, and on this line we're printing what this returns, and you can see we're taking the square root of minus 4, but of course we're dealing with the square root that's been defined in this module here. So if you compare this program statement with this one, you can see here we have CMath, whereas here you can see we have Math. If we return to this program and look at its runtime, what we will see is the following, and we can see it is telling us that it is 2J, which in fact is correct because on the previous slide in this video, we looked at the fact that the square root of minus 4 is 2j. Let's move on and consider this computer program. And you can see I'm importing CMath. And if you look on this line, you can see that I'm printing the square root of minus 4, which we know is 2j. On this line, I am printing the square root of minus 1. Now, the square root of minus 1, we should know, is j. And in Python, it would represent that by 1j and here I'm taking the square root of minus 4 using this math module so what this will return is the same as what this returns here however I have here this symbol and this will have an effect on what's displayed at the output so let's have a look at the output for this computer program and you can see it here and as you would expect this line gives us the 2j this line gives us the 1j now this line you can see gives us this output and it has shown us the output in its complex form whereas here if you look we've seen the output in the imaginary form whereas here we're looking at it in its complex number form and what this is telling us there is no real part but this here is telling us that we have minus 2j, which is not surprising because the square root of minus 4 is 2j. But of course, if you look here, you can see there's a minus sign there, and that's where this minus sign comes from. So in fact, 
This is really telling us that the output from this is minus 2j. Let's return to the real number line and let's consider the square root of minus 4. Now we've already shown in this video that this is equal to 2j, so I'm writing that here. And we know that 2j does not exist anywhere on the real number line. And in fact, what we have when we have imaginary numbers is another line that I'm showing here. And I've shown it going from minus 3 to plus 3. But of course, this line would be much, much bigger. In fact, it can go on in this direction to positive infinity and in this direction to negative infinity. So when I now turn my attention to this here, 2j, and ask the question, where is this? Well, it's going to be on the imaginary number line. So if I consider an x, I would place the x there, clearly showing that 2j is in the position of the x that you can observe on the screen. Consider another example. Let's look at the square root of minus 1. Now we saw on the previous slide that when we put this into a Python program, the Python program printed out 1j. So this we know is equal to 1j. Now where is that? Well it's going to be on the imaginary number line as represented by this x. It's going to be, as you can see, observed on the screen. Let's consider the following example. Negative the square root of negative 4. Now we know the square root of minus 4 is 2j. But of course, we can see outside the square root symbol, we have this negative sign here, this negative symbol. So what this is going to equal is the following, minus 2j, where this gives us the 2j, and this symbol appears here. So the question is, where is minus 2j? Well, minus 2j will be on the imaginary number line, but in the negative region. So we can say that it appears here. So what you're looking at here is the real number line and the imaginary number line, and together they form the complex plane. So let's have a look now at where we can plot some numbers associated with this complex plane. And we're going to start off with 3 here. Where is that within this complex plane? Well, we're going to see that it's a real number. Consequently, it's on the real number line, as you can see here. What about this example, minus 1? Well, minus 1 is a real number, so it's going to appear on the real number line. Of course, because it's negative 1, minus 1, it's going to appear in the negative area of the real number line, as demonstrated by this x. Let's consider another example. On this occasion, I'm going to choose this, plus 3j. Now, clearly, plus 3j is an example of an imaginary number. So it will exist on the imaginary number line, and we're going to show that representation by the x that's moving now. And we can see that goes there, which is on the imaginary number line at the plus 3 position. Let's consider another example as shown here, minus 2j. Now straight away we know that this is an example of an imaginary number, so it is going to appear on the imaginary number line in the negative region. So if you follow the x, you see that it goes to here, which is the minus 2 position on the imaginary number line, representing minus 2 J. So you should quite clearly see that the real numbers appear on the real number line and the imaginary numbers appear on the imaginary number line. And the imaginary number line and the real number line form what's called the complex plane. Let's now consider another example and I'm showing here. 4 plus 2j. Now this is an example of a complex number that has a real and an imaginary part. The real part is 4 and this is the imaginary part. We have j and we have two lots of j. Now what we need to do now is to say, well, where does this complex number appear on the complex plane? And the answer is, it's going to appear somewhere in the space of the complex plane, the 2D space that we're looking at. And the way in which we can decide where that is, is by looking at the plus 4, which is the real, coming over here and saying, well, this is the plus 4 position, and then writing a dotted line. And I've put the dotted line going up, as you can see, because I can tell by the complex number that here, when I look at the imaginary 
number is plus 2j, so I know it's going to be associated somehow with this. So I will now draw a dotted line in this position, and here where the dotted lines cross is the position of this 4 plus 2j. It's the position of this complex number in the complex plane. So I'll represent that position as shown here by this x moving into that position. Let's consider another example. 2 minus 3j. Now what I've got now is another complex number that has a real and an imaginary part. And what I will do, I will go to the plane and I will draw the appropriate dotted lines as you can see here and here. Now this dotted line is coming down from the plus 2 because that's what the real part was. And this dotted line comes from the minus 3 because we can see that this is minus 3j. And of course where they cross here is the position in the complex plane for this number that I'll now show with this x going to that position. Let's carry on by looking at another example as shown here minus 4 minus 2j. Now under these circumstances I again need to draw appropriate dotted lines and I'm going to do so from the minus 4 position on the real number line and the minus 2 position on the imaginary line. And if you look at those dotted lines they appear as you can see. Where they cross here is the position in the complex plane for this complex number. So if we put an x in the spot we can see as it moves it moves to the correct position. Let's consider a position in the complex plane marked by an x that's appearing to bounce into position now. We can see it stopped. Now where is that in the complex plane? Well what I can do, I can take a dotted line from an appropriate position on the real number line and another dotted line from an appropriate position on the imaginary line. So if I take it from the real line first, we can see that I've taken it from the minus 2 position on the real number line. So the real component for this x is minus 2. I can now say, well, where is it? On the imaginary line. So I'm now going to draw a dotted line, and you can see I've drawn it from the plus 1. Now that means that it is in the plus 1 position on the imaginary line. So this is going to be plus 1j, as you can see me adding that here. So this is the complex number for this position of the complex plane as marked by this x. Now these two lines mark off the complex plane and of course I can make it much bigger in all directions. I've shown it going to minus 5 and plus 5 and minus 3 and plus 3 respectively for the real and the imaginary lines. But if I wish to label the complex plane I can label this bit of the line as shown here as the positive real. Well what about this bit of the real number line? Well that can be labelled here as negative real. And of course both the negative and the positive directions can go on much much further than the plus 5. Of course if I wish to look at this bit of the imaginary line I would label that as shown here positive imaginary. And you can see that this arrow is saying continue going on to infinity. And this bit of the line, well, I can represent that as negative imaginary. And that too can go on to infinity. So what we're looking at with the real and the imaginary line is something that forms what is in fact the complex plane. So all of this here is the complex plane and all of these positions are the complex plane. Now if you look at these numbers here you can see it's plus 3, plus 2, plus 1 and here we have minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Now you may wish to emphasize that these are on the imaginary axis so you would put a j there. So you can often see this as shown here with a j in every position. So there's now no mistake. You can clearly see which is the imaginary and which is the real bit. And of course, as an aside, remember mathematicians wouldn't use j. They would have here i instead. So I recommend if you're going to be dealing with complex numbers, you have a clear understanding in your mind's eye what a complex plane is. 
Now, so far, I've shown it flat on the screen. But a good idea is to think of the complex plane as like this, where you can see you have the imaginary line and you have the real line, and you can see they have been labelled appropriately. Now, all of the X's that are appearing now are positions in the complex plane. And all of those X's are examples of positions for complex numbers. Now, I know all of them have a real and an imaginary part in this case because none of them exist on a line. They are floating, if you like, in the space that is defined by the complex plane. So if I was now just to look at one of them, I'm going to look at this one here. Where is that? What number represents that? We can clearly see where it is in the plane, but what number, what complex number represents it? Well, we bring in these dotted lines again, and I'm going to bring a dotted line down from the plus 3, and I'm going to say that that has the real component of plus 3, and we can come across with the dotted line from minus 2j, so we can say that the imaginary component of this x is minus 2j. So the complex number for this x is as shown here, 3 minus 2j. Now, of course, all of the other x's on the plane will have their own value of a complex number. Now, how many dots, how many x's can you have on the plane? Well, how many do you want? Just keep on adding them. They can go on and on and on. But clearly, you can see that each x as positioned in the complex plane, as in this example, has their own value representing as a complex number which has a real part and an imaginary part. So the key points that I would like you to take from this video are the following. All complex numbers that have a real and an imaginary part exist in the complex plane. And I recommend that you carry in your mind's eye the complex plane. And I'm showing that complex plane here. And we saw this in a bit more detail on the previous slide. You know that this, which is a complex number, will have a position somewhere on this complex plane, as defined by its real and its imaginary components. And you just simply have to draw those dotted lines that I've shown and find out where they cross. And that's the position in the complex plane for the complex number. So the key points I wish to continue with are as follows. The complex plane is a convenient and very useful geometrical interpretation of the complex number a plus bj. In other words, you can represent a complex number on the complex plane, which is a geometric interpretation of what looks like a number, albeit a strange looking number with a real and an imaginary part. So, to use complex numbers in Python, an understanding of complex numbers and the complex plane is fundamental. So as well as understanding what this means as a number, you also need to have in your mind's eye the complex plane as I'm showing here. Because armed with both the complex plane and the complex numbers, you can do some very useful maths indeed. And all of that maths can be done from within the Python programming language because it is able to deal with imaginary numbers, complex numbers, and obviously real numbers and integers. But we need to bear in mind that when we want to use complex numbers, we use the C math module. Now, there are also other modules which are very important when dealing with complex numbers, but this playlist on complex numbers is looking at the C math module. And here I've been talking about the mathematics behind complex numbers and trying to give a feel for the fact that complex numbers are related to geometry, to geometrical interpretation. So the complex number plane shows us a position and that position is the position of a very specific complex number. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?